Hi everyone, Kurt here. So today I want to go over what makes a good processing computer for astrophotography. I had a computer that I have been using and I thought it was good, but it was not. So I got a new souped up computer and today I will show you how I determined my computer that I had was not so good. And some of the things I did to try to make it faster, but it, it still didn't work. I'm Kurt Zapatello, and you're watching AstroQuest One. Okay, so let me give you a little background on my computer. And first off, here it is. Okay, so this is my laptop that I have been using. It's an HP Envy. All right, so one of the things that I did with this computer when I first got it, or within the first year, I should say, is I took I replaced the eight megabytes of RAM and added four more megabytes to twelve megabytes, and then I went to sixteen megabytes, which is full capacity now. And I also replaced the rotary original one terabyte hard drive with a five hundred gigabyte SSD, a solid state hard drive. That actually did some good because the machine was definitely faster after I did those upgrades. But did it speed it up fast enough? All depends on how long you want to wait. Let me just say something before getting too far into this. I'm using a Windows-based system. If you have an Apple Macintosh system, I believe, what I understand, they're inherently better for video processing and image processing in general. So I'm assuming if you get an equivalent Macintosh system or Apple system, then you're good to go as well. Okay. Okay, so I had this computer for about five years and I've been using it with various cameras. I started off using it with my DSLR and then about four years ago I bought an ASI 1600 and I was using it fine for stacking and processing. And with the ASI 1600, the individual exposures were 32 megabytes. And if I had like over 200 exposures, it would take something like I don't know, two to six hours for stacking. I thought that was kind of long, but, you know, I'm saying, well, the mess we would have takes. So I would do that overnight, meaning I would do it right before I go to bed. I would set it up to do the stacking. And then the next day I would do the regular processing. Last year, 2021, I purchased a, an ASI 294MC, and the individual so file sizes for that camera were 23 megabytes, which is smaller, and the stacking went a little bit quicker, but not much, and again, I would still do it the night before, and the following day, I would get up. Well, this year, I purchased a, an ASI 2600MC. <laughs> And the individual exposures for that camera came out to be 51 megabytes. Well, I did my first image with that camera, and I actually had 400 exposures, which is not too uncommon for me. I, I get that all the time. And boy, did that take a long time. The first image I took with it was the Polaris region, which I did a few months ago. And it was incredible. Let me go through some of the results of trying to stack that. Okay, so let's take a look at the way to batch pre-processing for the first time I tried processing this, and it failed, actually. So I had my 401 exposures of this Polaris region, and it went through 14 and a half hours, and it still didn't work. Turns out it ran out of space. Even though way to batch pre-processing said it only needed, I think, 120 gigabytes of space and I had like 160 megabytes free for some reason it still wasn't enough so then I posted a Facebook post on ZWO's website and I titled that running out of disk space any suggestions and I had tons of suggestions one of the common recommendations was to get an external solid state hard drive just for processing and that's exactly what I did so I purchased the Samsung uh, one terabyte portable SSD and I only use that for processing so I reran the project with on that external hard drive once I got it, and it worked. However, that one over here, that's not one hour, that's one day. And this two right here, that's two hours. It took over 26 hours 
for it to process. Although it worked, it was unacceptable. And I couldn't believe that everybody who has one of these cameras yeah, it would it would take that long for processing? So that's when I realized I need some help. I need to upgrade my system. Okay, for extra help, I sought out Joe Navarra. I was on a video conference with, with Joe Navarra and Glenn Clowder recently, and Joe actually did a process or a stacking job, and it only took him like five minutes when we were on the video. So I figured he'd be a great person to ask for advice on this. Hi, Kurt. How's it going, man? I'd be happy to help you with your computer. Uh, I actually build my own computers all the time. Uh, I've been building them for the last 20 years, and I'm a big uh, Intel NVIDIA fan, uh, usually with the uh, MSI motherboards. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people can't or don't feel comfortable building their own computer. The easiest way to go is to just grab like a Dell XPS system. Um, they usually have just about everything you could think of. Uh, if you're not planning on overclocking, they'd be perfect for you. And uh, it makes it real simple because it's just all there in one package. Uh, definitely make sure you get a pretty decent size SSD so that uh, making stacking a lot faster and processing a lot faster. And then get another hard drive as well if you can for storage so that you could move those off of there, uh, off your SSD onto storage later. I think the biggest thing for us in stacking images and stuff is going to be the processor. Uh, you're going to want an i7 or an i9, and you're probably going to want either the 10th gen or the 12th gen processor. The 12th gen uh, is probably uh, more bang for the buck right now uh, because it is the latest one. And uh, for RAM, you're going to want at least 16, but I would go with 32 if I was you. I know you'd mentioned that you had a budget of about $1,500. I'm pretty sure you can get that in there for 1500 and then lastly uh, you're really going to want a good video card i would go with the 3060 or a 3060 ti uh, series of nvidia card good luck man and if you have any other questions let me know excited for you thanks a lot joe i really appreciate your help and let me just show you my system real quickly kind of neat that's a g-force and it's a dell XPS 8950 with a very old monitor that will get replaced soon. Okay, let's take a look at this system. For the processor, I have the 12th generation Core i7. The operating system is Windows 11. The video card is the NVIDIA GeForce 3060. Memory, I upgraded the memory as recommended by Joe it came with 16 gigabytes, but I upgraded it to the 32 gigabyte memory. For hard drive, it has a 512 gigabyte solid state hard drive, but it also comes with a one terabyte hybrid hard drive. Apparently, I got a deal because I purchased it for $1,499, which was the base price. And when I upgraded the RAM to 32 gigabytes, I ended up paying $1,649 for it. However, I looked at it today which is August 11th, and it was going for $1,849 for the base price. Let's do a comparison between my old laptop and my new system. All right, these values came from the DXD dialog box. It's, it's actually a thing you can do and to get your specs of your computer. So I took one from my HP Envy notebook, and I also have the one for the my new computer here. And here's the stuff that I determined are very important for speed of the computer. So you have your system. Under the system category, you've got your hard drive. And both of them have a 512 gigabyte hard drive. So that's probably the, the same. Uh, however, on my new desktop, I also have a one terabyte. There's two disks in there. There's the solid state 512 gigabyte, but there's also a, a regular hard drive that's one terabyte for extra storage by RAM. So on my notebook, it's 16 gigabytes, and that's maxed out, so I can't go any more than that. On the Dell desktop, it's 32 gigabytes, so I've already doubled it, and it has 128 gigabyte maximum. But this is a big difference right now. So I've doubled the RAM. That might account for a lot of my problems with speed on, on my processing. The operating system, 
Turns out I've got Windows 10 on my notebook and the de desktop has Windows 11. Why don't I just upgrade to the new version of Windows on my notebook? And I can't. And the reason I can't is because the processor, both of them have the i7 processor, only this new desktop has the 12th generation, and on my laptop it's only the 7th generation, and the 7th generation does not support Windows or 11. Also, if you look on here, you can see this one has four CPUs, and this one on the desktop has 20 CPUs. What are some of the other big things, differences that should that may account for the speed or other things? And that's the display portion, the video card. On my laptop, I have this Intel HD 620 graphics, and on the desktop, I have the NVIDIA GeForce 3060. I've always known about hard drives, I've always known about RAM, and I've always known about processors and the operating systems on computers. Video cards are new to me. Maybe I'm dating myself, but when I was looking at computers and doing stuff like 30 years, video cards weren't important back then. Or maybe they were, but I didn't wasn't paying any attention, but they are now. And I know this for a fact because I have Topaz Denoise, and I've been using it for over two years now on my laptop. So I figured, geez, maybe I'll update to the new version of Topaz Denoise. And sure enough, I uploaded the new one, and then it doesn't work on my laptop anymore. So I was trying reinstalling it and doing all this other mumbo-jumbo. I contacted Topaz, and they said, yeah, send us your DX dialog file, and we'll look at it. They looked at it, and they said, yeah, your graphics card doesn't support the new version of Topaz. So they recommended getting an NVIDIA at least a 900 series, and this new series is a 3000, so... I figure I'm good to go with this. I've heard good things about uh, video cards and NVIDIA video cards in particular, so I'm very happy and I think that might have something to do with my speed perhaps as well, I don't know. Also, what is different is on this display business is the display memory and on my laptop it was 8,200 megabytes and on this new system it's 2,400. So it's not 2,400, 24,000. So I've tripled the uh, display memory on my new computer with this new system. Okay, let's take a look at some of my objects that I stacked and processed over the last couple of months. Here's the Polaris region, and I used my 2600, my notebook, 411 exposures, and it took 26 hours approximately. I then did the Iris Nebula, again, used the same equipment. Had 106, 196 exposures, and that took 12 hours. Now for the Lagoon. Here's one where I, I did several tests on it using the notebook, and this is when I finally got my desktop. So I decided to use the notebook and process everything on the notebook. 41 exposures that took an hour and 31 minutes. I did it with the notebook, but I used the external solid state hard drive. And again, it, it only took two minutes longer using that hard drive. So I think that was negligible. Now I did the Lagoon also on the desktop and it only took 20 minutes. And then I used my solid state hard drive on the desktop. And again, it took 21 minutes. So another minute longer using that solid state hard drive but still it's within reason i will continue to use the external solid state hard drive so this is like almost four and a half times faster using the desktop computer as opposed to the laptop okay so what are some of the other objects i did i did the crescent nebula and i had 175 exposures i used the asi 294 this time and that only, that's a less than an hour. That's a 49 minutes. If I were to do this with that desktop, this would have been about at least five hours. I also did the Dumbbell Nebula, and this I had 372 exposures. But that only took one hour and 10 minutes. This would have been a seven-hour operation had I been using my notebook. So I am ecstatic with this new computer. Okay, I have some final thoughts here. So number one, an external solid state hard drive is very useful, especially if you have other programs on the main hard drive. And you can also process on other computers, which also have PixInsight and Photoshop, such as myself. I still use my laptop 
and I still use my, and I have that desktop now, and I can just go back and forth between the two. Although 16 gigabytes of RAM is doable, I highly recommend you have 32 gigabytes of RAM or more. That had a profound effect on my speed. For Windows-based systems, a newer generation processor is better so that you can run the latest software, such as Windows 11. And also, the more CPUs a processor has, the better it is. In basic terms, a CPU execute, executes a set of instructions. So the more CPUs, the more sets of instructions it can handle at the same time. A good video card, such as an NVIDIA or an AMD, is necessary to run certain programs such as Topaz Denoise. And it also may affect the overall performance of the computer. Well, it's unlikely that a $600 computer is going to be good enough to have effective processing. More likely, you're going to have to spend double that amount or more. I know it's kind of tough thinking about you go, you spend all this money on getting equipment just to collect all the data, but now you have to spend even more processing it. So it's a hidden expense. Most people already have a good computer system already, but if you don't, you know, you're just going to have to factor this into your budget. Apple computers of equivalent power should work really well for processing, and they may work even better than a Windows-based system. Maybe some Apple com users can comment on that. Typically, desktops are a better deal price-wise than a laptop, all things being equal. Desktops also have more room for expansion, and the components do not have to be as small. An additional thing is they have better heat control, too, because they're bigger, there's more room for fans and stuff like that to keep the uh, overall system cooler. And finally, laptops do have the portability advantage. And the prices are becoming more competitive with desktop. In fact, Asus has this new Zen book that's a space edition, they call it. And it's especially made for astrophotography. So not only can you use it in the field to run all your software to collect images, but you can also do some processing with it. At $2,000, that's not a bad deal. I just saw a video from Trevor Jones on this and where he, he was given one of these things to test out and he produced some really good images uh, in the field. If you, if you want to go to the laptop route, I would recommend this one because it's already set for you. Well, there you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you learned something. I know I did by doing this and also... And special thanks to Joe Navarra for giving me some great advice on uh, getting a computer that is good for astrophotography. And we'll see you next time.